What are some of the best books I've read in 2021 so far? Stay tuned to find out. Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Zach with Zach's Books and today I've got for you my top 5 books that I have read in 2021 so far. Um, I also have got some honorable mentions on this list because honestly the first half of the year I've read so many bangers and it is this list was really hard to make uh, and I will say number one is going to surprise pretty much everybody. I'm telling you that right now it's not a book you would expect it to be um, due to the genre it is, but not a lot of you are going to expect this to be number one. I will be having these books linked down below if you're intrigued with any of these seven, because I'm going to have two honorable mentions. Um, yeah, all of them will be linked down below. Don't forget to check out everything else down below, our Goodreads, our Instagrams, the podcast, uh, all that stuff is going to be down there. So what are some books that you've been enjoying so far in 2021? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let's jump into some honorable mentions. Alright, so the first two I'm going to talk about are honorable mentions, like I said. Uh, and honestly, something that's going to surprise most of you guys is... The only Stephen King book that's in this list is an honorable mention. Honestly, I've not read many banger Stephen King books so far this year. Um, I've read a couple that have been pretty solid, uh, but none that I personally think are... I mean, there's like been one or two where I gave the ratings a little bit higher than this book, but at the end of the day, this book spoke to me the most, and that is Dreamcatcher. So, this book actually is more solid than people think. A lot of people really hate this book because it drags on, it's long, people kind of were thinking like, oh, he's trying to get back into his it roots, and it just didn't work. I The, the friendship between the four friends in this book really is what spoke to me the most because it's so great. They're all, you know, they're all bonded together by this one thing, which is Duddits. And, you know, they keep coming back to see each other every winter in the hole in the wall, which is like a cabin up in the woods. Um, and just this one year, something happens to happen, and it just shows how strong their friendship is. You know, unfortunately, not all of them make it. I'm not going to tell you which ones don't. Um, there's actually a movie that was made with this. It was really solid. I really enjoyed the movie, too. Um, the whole alien aspect in this, a lot of people hated. Because it kind of it, it kind of feels like two separate stories at times, where you know you got the friendship, you know the friends, they're all hanging out, and then all of a sudden at some point it takes this weird turn, and then aliens show up, and a bunch of other crap happens. I personally really enjoyed this book. I, at the time, I think I give it four, maybe four and a half stars, but at the end of the day, to me, this is a five star book, and I really like this book. Honorable mention number one: Dreamcatcher by Stephen King. So the next honorable mention I'm going to have is. So, originally Danielle and I had actually made the, like, um, kind of like a makeshift list for this video maybe two months ago, month and a half ago, because we were kind of planning ahead, um, and these two were actually in the top five originally. Two books replaced them, and they are on this list, number one and number three on this list, um, actually shifted these two out. So the next one I'm going to talk about is Here and Gone by Halen Beck. So, this is a book about a mother, uh, and I think her name is Audra. Her name is Audra, and she's driving down the road with her two kids. She gets pulled over by a police officer, and then she gets asked to come back out. They go to the police car, and then the two, the two another police officer shows up, takes the car with the two kids in it, and basically the two police officers are working together. They kidnap two kids, and nobody's believing her because they're like, oh yeah, there's two cops that have got a really good track record. You know, there are no kids in the back of the car that both officers are saying there's no kids at all. They know what you're talking about. And it's a really aggravating story because, like, you know the truth about what happened, but, like, you're also, like, you want the story to kind of progress that way because it's like, you know, I want to see what's going to happen. But at the end of the day, you're like, you know, F those police officers for doing what they're doing, and it's like, 
Come on. Like, just take the woman's word for it. Find them. Find the kids. Um, the ending was really sweet. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, the woman's also kind of going through a divorce, so the husband's kind of out of the picture. And her first assumption is, like, the husband hired these two people to do to do what they're doing. Um, which I'm not going to say if that's true or not. you got to read the book to find that out. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure I gave this five stars. Again, look at Goodreads down below. Um, but a very solid book, really enjoyable, and that is Here and Gone by Halen Beck. All right, now we're getting into the good stuff. We are into the top five of my favorite books of 2021. I will say that two out of these five were read within probably the first like month of the year, and so they've held true so far, and I'm really excited about it, but I will say the two books I did add almost knocked one of these off. Um, but the one I'm going to talk about first is Brother by Anya Alborn. So this book was probably one of the bigger surprises so far this year because I did not expect that much from Anya Alborn. And now that I've read probably four books by her and they've all been at least four, four and a half stars, it's been really solid. And this is the first one I read and I gave it five stars. Um, so this is about a boy who kind of joins his family and they're like really weird and sadistic. They do a bunch of weird crap. There's an older brother who's like really mean. Um, there's a sister who, all honesty, I'm going to tell you guys, is like trying to like get with the brother, like trying to bang him. And a lot of weird stuff happens. This book is, it's very, it, it's it's a it's such a roller coaster of emotions. It's unreal because there are some parts where it's like. Yo, this is really solid. And then there's parts where you're just like, did that really just like flip and happen? Like, what the hell? Um, I will say, um, a lot of people commented on the video I did with this a long time ago. I am not a cheeseburger person, but some people said that after reading this, they were really craving McDonald's cheeseburgers because that's literally all the kid would eat. He would literally just go to McDonald's and get burgers. That's it. Um, but no, I'm not a burger person that much. I will eat my father's in law, my father in law's hamburgers, but that's, that's about it. I'm not really the big burger kind of person, more of a chicken nugget guy. Um, but this book got five stars. There's like hidden twists in there, and the ending. I, I mean, my mind was blown with how it ended, and it's sadistic what goes on between the two brothers at the end of the day you know at the start the one the younger one's just kind of listening to the older one trying to pick up on some stuff and then he ends up being like something in him turns and like gets back at his brother for something that he did and it is phenomenal writing in my opinion so coming in at number five is Anya Allborn brother all right coming in at number four was actually part of a winter reading vlog uh, which we'll have up here. This was back in January. Uh, it actually consisted of Dreamcatcher, this book, and One by One by Ruth Ware, which actually was in a top list of something of mine at some point earlier in the year, but obviously I've read more books since then. So this is coming in at number four. If you were to ask me a month ago, this would have been at number three or two. I think it was two. Yeah, it was number two at the time. Uh, but then I read two more books and then got pushed back. So there's two timelines in this book. There is back in, I think, 1908, and then there's a more present time, uh, which I think might be in the 80s or 90s. I don't think it's like 2000s. Um, it could be 2000s. I read this in January. If you want more in-depth like thoughts with this book, again, like I said, it's been a couple months since I've read this. But in the video that we posted with the winter reading vlog, I talk a lot more about this. So check that video out because I'm going to guarantee you right now I'm probably going to miss a couple of facts with this. And I apologize ahead of time, but please look at that video because I've got not stop thoughts about this book in that video. So it's told in two timelines. There's a woman with a daughter back in like the very early 1900s. 1908 is the date that I'm seeing in here. And what ends up happening is the daughter dies. She gets sent out into the woods and the husband's supposed to be kind of keeping an eye on her. And it does not go well. Um, the daughter ends up going missing. They end up finding her. And this all kind of happens within the first, like, like 50, 100 pages. So it's not like it's like, oh, my God, it's a big surprise. 
No, it happens fairly early on because the book is relatively based around that girl who passed away. So, a lot of people compare this to Pet Cemetery. Um, I got some of those vibes with reading this book. Uh, I know some people say, you know, I read this book, kind of gave me those kind of vibes, and I don't really get that all the time. Um, the most recent one was The Plot and Secret Window, Secret Garden. I did a video about that. It's not as similar as people think. But I will say the Winter People and Pet Cemetery; those vibes were there the entire time, and I loved every single second of it. Five-star book. Uh, Jennifer McMahon is another author who's actually been pretty much a surprise for me this year. I haven't read as much of her as I have Anya Alborn, um, which I keep putting her on like TBR videos, and I just I just don't read them, and I really don't know why. I just like other things pop up, and I'm like, I'll just read that instead. Um, but the Winter People, uh, the more current day thing is this woman's kind of experiencing some weird poltergeist type stuff. And once you find out the truth about what it is, it's it's pretty creepy and rather eerie, in my opinion. So, five star book, absolutely loved it. And uh, I, would, I also really recommend this book. Um, but there you have The Winter People by Jennifer McMahon, coming in at number four. All right, the next book I'm going to talk about is one of the ones that knocked off the other two and made honorable mentions. Um, this book has sat with me for a while now. After I obviously after I've read it, it's been maybe a month or two now, and this book is absolutely phenomenal. And obviously, if it wasn't for number two and number one, this would be probably the best book of the year I've read so far. And that is the plot by Gina Hanf Korlitz. I believe I said that correctly. So, this book, I was almost left speechless after I finished this book. The twist at the end is probably one of the best twists that I've ever read in a thriller, horror book, whatever this book is labeled. I think it's a thriller. I mean, even Stephen King on the top says it's insanely readable. And typically, if there's like a blurb from Stephen King, normally I pick up the book because if he likes it, I gotta give it a chance. Um, but this book was really solid. This is about a, a teacher, I believe he's in college, and what ends up happening is um, there's a student in one of his writing classes who like writes this really solid opening to a story, and you know, the teacher's like, amazed by it and he's like holy crap you know you gotta you gotta you know finish the story you gotta publish it and the kid's like kind of douchey and he's just kind of like you know i don't need your class i'm just kind of here to be here you know f you uh they eventually part ways and a couple years pass he never sees the story get published but he finds out that the kid passed away and so he ends up writing the story instead and finishes it kind of differently than how it goes. Well, you find out the truth about the story, and he starts getting these nasty emails saying, I know what you did, you stole his story, and the book is him pretty much trying to figure out who sent the email, you know, who knows the truth, and it's, oh my gosh, it is, it's a roller coaster of a book, it's such a good book. I... I can't talk about it enough, and I feel like we haven't put this in many videos, and it's such a good book. Even Danielle read this, gave it five stars, and she, as soon as I finished, I turned and looked at her, and I'm like, oh my goodness. She goes, I know, right? I'm like, yeah, it's a good book. So, five-star book, comes in at number three on my list, just because the other two kind of edged it out. So, there you have the plot by Jean Hanf Corlitz. All right, coming in at number two, so all honesty, when I was making this list for this video, the plot and this one that came in second was honestly the toughest decision to make. The other ones I knew were going to be in the list, I knew they were going to be in their places, but these two I was back and forth on which one I was going to put where and kind of my reasoning behind it. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day... The plot is a really solid thriller, but I'm someone who needs a little bit more horror in his books. So that is why I went with Thomas Harris's 
The Silence of the Lambs, coming in at number two. So, this book stays very, well, I mean, the movie stays very true to this book. It's such a phenomenal book. I honestly didn't want to stop reading it. I wanted to keep going. I never wanted to stop. Unfortunately, I started it at like 8 p.m., so I had to stop and go to bed. But at the end of the day, this book was probably one of the best books that I have read overall and entirely. Um, so this is about a woman, detective, police officer, who um, ends up needing the help from Hannibal Lecter, which is a cannibal, you know, kind of insane person who used to be, you know, a, a sane, like, poli uh, not police officer, like teacher, professor kind of guy. And something in him snapped and he became a cannibal. Hannibal the cannibal. And so what ends up happening is she needs his help to find a this new kind of murdering kind of guy. His name is Buffalo Bill. Um, because what he ultimately wants to do, Buffalo Bill, is he wants to capture certain sized women. Like they have to be a specific dress size and everything. He wants to capture them, kill them, skin them, and make himself a woman suit so he can become a woman. Um, and so ultimately at the end of the day, that's what he's trying to accomplish. And that's what he's trying to do. And so what... <laughs> It, it it's such a weird eerie book and it's so like it's so like mind effing it's it's un, it's really solid i could i honestly like i said i couldn't put this thing down uh we did do this in like a reading vlog form with two other books i think it was reading classic horror uh, i don't remember the other two books but i keep wanting to say rosemary's baby was part of it uh we'll post that up here if you want to check out that video um but this book, five stars, it's it's so good. I absolutely love this book. Um, but yeah, coming in at number two is The Silence of the Lambs by Thomas Harris. All right, guys, time is here. The number one book that I have read in 2021 so far, it's, pr it's probably the biggest surprise book that I've ever read because it's a science fiction genre. It's not something that I typically read. Um, I basically, I mean, this was a book of the month pick, and I basically read this book because Mike's book review, again, had recently read this book. We'll post his channel down below if you want to take a look at his stuff. Really good guy, great science fiction stuff. I mean, he reads a lot of stuff, a bunch of different genres. Um, and I had overheard him saying in one of his videos that this book is in competition for him for, I think, Book of the Year as well. And I'm not going to lie, I didn't go into this book expecting it to be as good as it was. And I'm utterly blown away with how good this book is. Um, and I'm just going to get into the book because I keep talking. I'm beating around the bush here. The number one book for me this year so far is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. You have three different genres in your top three. I got thriller, I got horror, and I got science fiction. Um, the only one that's missing is fantasy, but that's because Harry Potter does not deserve to be in my top five. Um, besides that, though, this book, wow. I did not expect it to be as good as it was. Um, if you don't know, he's also the author of The Martian, which was a, a film a couple years ago. I, I know Matt Damon is in the film. I just don't remember if that's the one with Matthew McConaughey in it as well. But regardless of that fact, it was made into a movie and it kind of got mixed reviews. So I haven't read The Martian yet. And luckily this isn't like a sequel so I don't have to read it. But this book is so good. It has got... So Ryland Grace is a science teacher at this high school. And... Or no, elementary school. He's an elementary school science teacher. And so what ends up happening is the first part of the book, um, he's kind of figuring out who he is. He wakes up from this coma on this spaceship called Project Hail Mary. Um, he doesn't remember anything about himself. He doesn't remember why he's in space. He doesn't remember a lot of things. And so he's just kind of waking up and, you know, from there, I, I, the only downside with this book, I'll say, is it's very scientific and very, like, 
a lot of terms are used in this book that I don't quite understand, but that's, you know, because it's very, like, smartish and, like, scientific. You know, a, a lot of things go into this book that, I obviously, I don't quite understand the terms of, but the book itself is phenomenal. So eventually what happens is we find out that he was put on this spaceship to try and figure out what's going on with these, um, I can't even pronounce the name of them, but there's some, there's something going on with the sun and it's getting colder like day by day. And they're saying within the next like 20, 30 years, it'll be down 10 degrees, which is going to cause an ice age. And so he and two other people were sent out to try and figure out what's going on. Well, A, you figure out the truth of why he was sent up. Hint, hint, it was kind of against his will. But when you read it, you'll, you'll understand. It's actually towards the end of the book when you find out how he actually got sent up. Um, two, his crewmates, which this is early on in the book, so it's not like really ruining anything. Um, the other two crewmates he has are dead. And so... He's the only one that survived from the long slumber that they had. So the way it works is 13 years to where they need to be, and then 13 years back. Um, so a lot of cool things happen in this book. He runs into a character that I love. Oh my goodness. I'm not going to explain what it is, but they he names it Rocky. And that is probably the biggest... Oh. The ending of this book is so cool, it's like, it's un, it's unreal. And the build up to it is phenomenal, and when he makes the decision, it's just like, dude, like, go do it. Like, you, you got this. And the ending is like so touching, it's, that's why I give this five stars. It, if it had ended a different way, I, I think Silence of the Lambs would have probably beat it up. But the way how it ended... It's such a good book. So, my number one favorite book of the year so far in 2021, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. All right, guys. So, those are my top five favorite books of 2021 so far. Obviously, we're about halfway through the year. So, we're going to have some more books coming out. We'll have some books I still need to read. Still have a plethora of Stephen King I need to read. Um, but, yeah, a lot of you guys who are looking for Stephen King in this list... I'm not going to say I'm sorry to disappoint, but I'm sorry that the books I've read this year have been disappointing by him. Um, but besides that, love the list. Very solid books I've read so far this year. Again, if you're intrigued with any of them, we'll have them linked down below, all seven of them, the two honorable mentions as well. Um, but yeah, what are some of your favorite books you've read this year in 2021? Let me know in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Later.